and I have saved it because it just really tells about how the Conservancy came to be and how effective it has become. So if you will uh, indulge me, let me read some of this if I may. The State of California acted to establish the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy to assist the protection of natural resources surrounding Los Angeles, California. The landmark legislation resulted from the recognition by environmentalists and some elected officials that piecemeal runaway land development was threatening the remaining mountain lands in and around the sprawling megalopolis. Their consensus for the best practical strategy for the vision of protected lands near this vast urban setting was to create a public agency for conservancy capable of both coordinated regional land planning and outright acquisition and improvement of land to preserve wild habitat, scenic areas, cultural resources, open space, and recreational uses into the future. Now, more than four, now that 35 years later, we have the original vision for the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy, and it has proven remarkably successful. A networking link of public open space parklands, trails, wildlife corridors, and recreational opportunities accessible to nearly 13 million residents of the area. The agency's hard charging creativity in the last three decades has sometimes been controversial, but it has resulted in 70,000 acres of permanently protected open space, including 300 new parks that were open and well over 100 miles of new trails established. The Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy Zone, including the Rim of the Valley Trail Corridor, which lies in the coastal Southern California Mediterranean ecosystem, we have a globally rare ecosystem with high diverse habitats, chaparral, coastal sagebrush, oak woodlands, oak forest, riparian, native grasslands, you name it, <laughs> conservancies, Jurisdiction uh, includes the protection of watersheds of the Los Angeles River, Santa Monica Bay, and Santa Clara River, and complement that with the large animal species that are protected, including mountain lions, bobcats, coyotes, mule deers, badgers, great fox, ringtail cats, raccoons, and even the long-tailed weasel. Avian species are highly diverse from residents to migratory birds and the region is part of the Pacific Flyway. And other species of concern include reptile and amphibian species and fish such as the endangered steelhead trout. The conservation challenge is complicated since these wildlife populations live right up against or within suburban and even urban neighborhoods, ensuring continued habitat viability for wildlife and native plant communities has been a driving mission of the Conservancy. The unique, unique structure of the Conservancy greatly aids the consensus building essential to conservation activities. The Conservancy is an independent state agency under the California Natural Resources Agency, governed by a board made up of appointees from state, federal, and local agencies. Large political and community constituencies are are represented, participate, and have come to be so engaged in the work of the agency that broad buy-in for land protection objectives and projects rapidly evolved over the decades. The governor, state assembly speaker, state senate president, mayor of Los Angeles, the boards and supervisors of Los Angeles and Ventura County, the United States National Park Service, Forest Service, the Natural Resource Agency Secretary, State Coastal Commission and State Coastal Conservancy, and the California Department of Parks and Recreation and State Legislature participants, all are represented on the Conservancy Board. The Conservancy statute also authorized a 26 member advisory committee, which assists the board in its monthly deliberations. It includes a broad array of local government representatives, in addition to six state appointees. The support from the Conservancy Board, Advisory Committee, and Southern California communities has been a key factor in the Conservancy's success, especially since the agency has only a very small staff. The Conservancy has long been recognized for its desire for protecting nature, clean water, clean air, outdoor recreation, and scenic beauty that cuts across societal and geographic boundaries people from economically disadvantaged communities within Los Angeles and Ventura County, from enclaves in Beverly Hills to the Hollywood Hills, suburban dwellers, 
Kabak and even Malibu has all come to appreciate the value of the common goal of preserving open space. Also established is a successful conservancy with other state and local agencies. Most notable is the Mountains Recreation and Conservation Authority, MRCA, a local government entity formed pursuant to California's Joint Exercise of Powers Act because of text war. In the 1980s, the conservancy <laughs> joined with two long-standing local park districts, the Caneo Rec and Park and the Rancho Simi Rec and Park districts to provide land management capabilities. The MRCA now employs well over 100 staff members, wildfire trained park rangers with law enforcement capabilities, park maintenance staff, planners, biologists, landscape architects, legal counsel, and financial staff. The NPS and the California Department of Parks and Rec are also important partners to both the Conservancy and MRCA. All four are parties to a cooperative management agreement for the federally designated Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area. Seven other joint exercise of powers entities have been formed between the Conservancy and a number of cities and counties to achieve geographically specific local and state objectives for land preservation. Identifying and then acquiring key choke points near roads and freeways became an urgency, urgent conservancy goal in the late 1980s. The mission to maintain ecologically functioning linked habitat blocks that will ensure that wildlife can persist in the Santa Monica Mountains and adjoining mountain ranges even as urban human populations grow, priority for land acquisition and site development are set by the conservancy which emphasizes protection of wildlife, habitat linkages, and ecologically sensitive property. And it just uh, finished up with the, that as a large part of the Conservancy's multi-decade effort has been to create and manage wilderness parkland, there has also been an ever-increasing realization that it is essential to bring back green nature back into otherwise urbanized areas of the city. So social, ecological, economic, environmental benefits are being achieved in the conservancies and other partners work to create new kinds of urban natural parks and restore urban rivers. Restoration of the mostly concrete line Los Angeles River seemed to be a silly dream to many when it was first espoused in the 80s and 90s, but the conservancy became part of a growing coalition with a vision of a gray to green revitalized urban river corridor. And it goes on to talk about the importance of the endangered species that we protect. And you just realize how important it is that uh, we're at a point with the conservancy and in, in its history of being able to negotiate very complex land deals, react quickly to otherwise unanticipated opportunities, and also accept donations of land which have been lost for, which would have otherwise been lost uh, for the enjoyment of the public. The Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy continues to be a unique government agency that marshals resources to pursue a vision of real nature and wilderness that is accessible and can be enjoyed by many millions of current and future residents and visitors of Southern California. So you realize how it started with a few and a, what incre incredible impact it has had. And so it's a, really an honor I think for everybody here to be a part of this and to see the incredible accomplishments and realize that now more than ever it is needed as we more and more become urbanized how much more we cherish the lands that we can save. With that I'm going to turn it over to our advisory committee and, and for some comments too. Thank you Chair Parks. Uh, certainly since the beginning since inception the advisory committee was a part of our effort in fact, I don't know who the first chair of the advisory committee was, but the second chair happened six months later, and it was one Jerome Daniels seated to my right, <laughs> who uh, took over the chair. And there have been some adventures. I mean, there were points when the advisory committee didn't meet jointly with the board. There were times when the finance department thought we'd be better off uh, not meeting since we cost so much money. <laughs> there, there have been... Uh, there have been times when we have had difficulty with quorums because of the long distances, but you know, really for the last 10 years or so, you all have all really not only cooperated, but I'm really proud of the fact that this advisory committee has given not only great advice and stewardship, but has persisted through all of this to make it what it is. 
I'm going to give it over to the MRCA. Yeah. Thank you, Chair Robinson of the Advisory Committee. And uh, before I talk to, uh, on where my MRCA hat, uh, <laughs> I've got a little special note from a former a member of both the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy and the MRCA, the one and only Michael Berger. Uh, some of you know Michael. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I get the right page in front of me. Ah, oh, there it is. It says, congratulations on 35 years of preserving open space in Southern California. The Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy's current involvement in joint powers authorities is a testament to your ability to forge relationships and involve many other governmental agencies in the preservation of precious open space. I would also like to recognize and thank Jerry Daniel, Liz Cheeto, Rory Skay, uh, and Joe Edmondston uh, for their continued dedication to the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy. They, they were there early on and continue to be the driving forces in the quest for the preservation of open space for generations to come. Keep up the good work. Michael D. Berger, former member and chair of the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy and the MRCA. Um, Mike said it, uh, said it all as far as the focus that we as a group have. We come from many distances and seeing Darren uh, coming all the way from Pasadena. Burbank. Burbank. I don't see any, don't see any members from Pasadena here yet. From here, they look alike. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. And, and we have a gentleman from Santa, representing Santa Clarita here, but uh, that, that's what is so phenomenal. Um, we have representatives from Sierra Madre, uh, Malibu was mentioned, uh, all over Southern California. And we all have the same focus of preserving open space, providing public access to areas that normally individuals would not have the opportunity to, to visit and become part of nature. Uh, the MRCA has been blessed with a great staff. Uh, we've accomplished a lot. 